I'm pleased to welcome you to Faversham's commemoration of Holocaust Memorial Day. Many of us have a personal connection through our families to the Holocaust or to the events of that period. All of us will feel appalled by what happened and by subsequent acts of genocide. We owe it to the victims to remember. We owe it to future generations to understand what happened and oppose hatred whenever we see it. On behalf of the Town Council, I hope you find this exhibition informative, educational, dignified and moving. Thank you. In the summer of 1993, the soldiers started rounding up all Bosnian Muslim men in my hometown and they were all taken away into concentration camps. I, as an eight-year-old boy, lost faith in all humanity. Holocaust Memorial Day is very important for us. Students are very aware of conflicts going on around in the world. Today we're very lucky to have a survivor of the Bosnian genocide speak to our students and share his story with the students because often students realise that these people are actually normal people, people that they can connect with and relate with and it's really important for them to understand that these events could happen to anyone at any time. It's not just words in a history textbook anymore. It's someone who's, who we've seen and, and he's told us his own story about how his life is, has been affected, so everything just became a lot more real. We are in the borough of Wigan and Lee and we have been performing our Holocaust Memorial Day. It has been very important for us as a group of people and young people in the borough in particular, they've been learning about the Holocaust for many years. I was invited to attend a Holocaust Day Memorial Trust event in Belfast. What they were looking to do was to run events inside each one of our prisons. And I began to think, well, how much better would it be if the prison population was actively involved? It was very, very worthwhile and it changed my life for good, so I'm so glad I took part in it. We're in the Reading Civic Offices and we have been at a wonderful evening of prayer, reflection, symbolism, music. We've learned the Patterson song, which we're really proud of, so we're going to be singing that. It made me feel like I was part of something bigger. We knew about the Holocaust, but when we learn it in detail, you realise the horror, and it really does, it impacts you to think how lucky you are to be alive in this generation. Events like this can really help the community to come together as one.
Germans were sterilizing or castrating all colored men with German nationality. A few weeks later, a colored friend of mine was summoned to the Gestapo headquarters in Frankfurt. I never saw him again. My name is René Bornstein. I was, uh, when, the, when the war started, I was five years old. I was in a cozy home, a normal home, you know, nice, pa loving parents. You know, we children, until we had the other round up, we were uh, very happy. And because it was a little town of 10,000 uh, people. Was we could uh, play everywhere because there was no cars. Only the Lord Mayor, the priest, and the doctor had a car. In 1942, whole France was uh, declared as zone occupée. Then it was a lot of roundup, more and more roundup, and uh, very often Jewish organization came to my parents and said, uh, "You should leave. You, you should." put your children in security because everybody knew it will be around us, we will be taken. My parents decided with a very heavy heart to send us uh, to, we were supposed to go to Switzerland. It was a Jewish organization called OSE and they, they, gave, they let us go to Switzerland thinking we are going there. And we 32 children went on this lorry and it was very, very hot, but we had to be hidden. All the curtains were down. Then we reached this clandestine border in, the mid, uh, in Switzerland. We were already at the border. But when the lorry stopped, uh, we, uh, one boy he was 11 and he said, Oh, Monsieur les Allemands, they always travel in Citroën. Citroën was maybe at the time like the Rolls Royce now. And it was four officers. And behind this, uh, for this Citroën was a big lorry with German soldiers, as we children could escape. Anyway, then uh, they asked straight away, uh, Marianne, where are you going? She said, well, they are children, are just, they, are they will be sent in a, her, in a summer camp because it was just because of the bombing from Lyon. And uh, they followed her, followed us, and they said, where are you going? She said, we're going in this place, Pas de l'Echelle, where uh, it was a children's home. We arrived there, and the person in charge, she said, when she saw us, she said straight away, they're not those children, because I only expected boys. That was, they call it, the directrice. And later on, we learned, I heard she was a collaboratrice. So we spent a few hours, we were already night, uh, the eldest one was straight away sent into prison de Pax in Anmas, and we spent a few hours, I think, in the early morning, three o'clock or four o'clock, I wouldn't say. We were taken also to Anmas. But first we were interview interrogated. What is your name? Are you Jewish? How old are you? Are you Jewish? And the address of the parents. And we didn't give the address of the parents. We had wrong, false ID, but unfortunately not even finished. Oh, they noticed right away we are Jews. It was really a fact that everybody recognized. And we were sent in this prison, Le Pax. And near our cell, I remember, was a very nice lady. I remember her because only once she had the occasion to give us a few good words. And uh, uh, very soon after, we heard terrible screaming. And this screaming it would follow me, uh, I think, my entire life. I can hear this screaming. And we noticed, we children, that 
that until the last uh, uh, breeze, he could breathe. After we were liberated, the Lord Mayor, Monsieur Jean Defoe, he was afraid that the Gestapo might come back and he sent us to Switzerland. It was a hotel, Carlton, converted in a center of uh, Red Cross. And we were uh, there. We were, I think, until November. Well, my parents didn't know where we were, really. And they find us through the Red Cross, I think. My name is uh, Ernest Simon. I was born in May 1930 in Eisenstadt in Austria. I enjoyed school. Uh, I distinctly remember my first school report uh, from which, if I can show you this, you will see that I was absolutely brilliant in everything except handwriting. Handwriting was just okay, but everything else, else was sehr gut, and uh, I was quite proud of that. In March 1938, the Nazis came in. They immediately started the persecution of Jews in Burgenland. They were a number of uh, Jewish families throughout the, uh, Germany and Austria were given the opportunity of sending children to England, to safety. And uh, they had the dilemma of deciding, am I prepared to send my son or daughter uh, to a country where nobody knows us, they don't know the language, uh, they are complete strangers, but at least the likelihood is that their lives would be saved or do I take the risk of keeping this child with me and seeing what would happen under this Nazi regime? A real dilemma. And my parents were faced with this dilemma uh, because on the 11th of January, 1939, they put me on a train at the uh, Wiener Westbahnhof, the Wiener West Station, they put me on a train bound for England. I was eight years old at that time, and they had absolutely no idea whether they would ever see me again. They pretended, of course, that they would follow. They pretended that it was just a, a journey for me. You know, you have to try and imagine an eight-year-old boy uh, in, a, in that sort of situation. How does he feel? Um, well, my memory is not very clear. All I know is that my parents were encouraging me to see this as a sort of adventure, that they would follow up very soon, that I, would, I had to be a good boy and I had to go to this family and, uh, and really see them as my uh, foster aunt and uncle. That was the idea. This was, if you think, a uh, January crossing, an overnight crossing from the Hook of Holland to Harwich. And uh, it was a rather rough journey. So I do remember being seasick. The next thing I remember is arriving at Liverpool Street Station. Um, and somehow or other, I found myself at a, at a hostel in the Whitechapel area. I know this from papers which I obtained subsequently from World Jewish Relief, who had a, a record of the activities of the children at that time. And I know that the, I was sent to a, an overnight hostel in the Whitechapel area where I spent the night. And I know that the next day I was taken to Leeds.
My mother, brother, and I stayed together, but we were separated from my father. We never saw him again. You know, we were attacked because we were Muslims, because it was a Serb plan to claim this part of the country for themselves. So in, in that sense, what happened here was not personal. People who targeted me from the above. On the other hand, it was so personal when it, when it came to the people who attacked us, because I recognized many soldiers. And then of course, neighbors came from behind the hedge.
Pierwsze słowo to było cygojny, szwajny, cygojny. Te dwa słowa. To pamiętam i z tymi słowami ja umrę. On the radio, they were telling them, kill every Tutsi. We don't need any Tutsi being left. So take your machetes, take everything, everything you've got, go and kill every Tutsi. That's when we start seeing all the Hutus walking on the street with the machetes. <laughs> 